Okay, this is part two of the lecture on projectile kinematics. In part one of the lecture, I went through the monkey hunter demonstration, and I showed how the result of the monkey hunter demonstration illustrates the acceleration of a projectile. The acceleration of a projectile is just downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. It's acceleration due to gravity. This means that physically there is no difference between an object in free fall and an object moving as a projectile. In both cases, they're under the influence of the Earth's gravity and the acceleration is downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Because of this, this then means that it's rather straightforward to describe the kinematics of a projectile, and that's what we'll do here. Okay, let me begin to describe the kinematics by drawing out the following diagram. Okay, let's say that we launch a projectile like so, and we do so with an initial speed. The initial speed is referred to as V naught. It's the magnitude of this initial velocity vector. Let's immediately begin to visualize the components of this initial velocity vector horizontally and vertically. Okay, the horizontal component, like so, is referred to as Vx naught. The vertical component, like so, is referred to as Vy naught. We define an angle here associated with the initial velocity vector. This initial angle or projection angle, as it's called, is typically labeled as theta naught, like so. Okay, now what we have here is a vector triangle, and we could use a little bit of basic trigonometry to describe that vector triangle. So recall the following mnemonic that allows you to very easily remember the trigonometric ratios, SOHCAHTOA. Okay, specifically what we need from SOHCAHTOA is sine and cosine. Recall that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, let's use this vector triangle here to describe these two components of this initial velocity vector. So first of all, the sine of the angle. Okay, the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side of the triangle, which is Vy naught, divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is the initial speed, the magnitude of this initial velocity vector, that's V naught. So then therefore, if I cross multiply the V naught here to the other side of the expression, I then come up with a simple equation that describes the initial velocity in the y direction for the projectile. That is, like so. Okay, and then we do this horizontally as well. We're going to need cosine to do so. So the cosine of the angle theta naught, that's equal to the adjacent side of the triangle, which is Vx naught. That's the initial component of the velocity in the horizontal direction. And then divided by the hypotenuse, which is V naught once again. That's the magnitude of the vector. Okay, let's go ahead and cross multiply the initial speed here to the other side and then write the initial velocity in the x direction like so. So we'll need these two little trigonometric formulas here to describe these initial components here as we proceed through the description here of the kinematics of a projectile. Okay, let me do a little bit of erasing before I go any further. Okay, now let's say it right here, just by definition, is the origin associated with the projectile motion. So then therefore, if I launch the projectile from this position, there are components associated with the initial position vector here of this projectile. So for example, right here horizontally is the component of the position in the x direction. This right here is referred to as x naught. And then right here is the component of the position vertically relative to the origin. This right here is referred to as y naught. Okay, now let's assume that some time goes by like so, and the projectile begins to move through its path, like so, and at this instant in time, let's say that the projectile is right here. Now, at this instant, the projectile has a velocity vector v that's in this direction, and there are components associated with this velocity vector here horizontally, this is written as v sub x, and then here vertically, like so, this is written as v sub y. Okay, now, in addition to those components of the velocity, there is also a final position vector here on this diagram. Okay, that final position vector, by the way, goes like so. I'm not going to draw it here on a diagram because if I did, it would get a little bit messy. But instead, what we do is we draw its components. We draw its components here horizontally, like so. This right here horizontally is x. And then the final position vertically, like so. This right here is referred to as y. 
And now what we seek to describe are the position and velocity of the projectile horizontally and vertically as a function of time. Okay, first of all, let's write down the equations vertically. When I write down the equations vertically, they're the exact same kinematics equations for the one-dimensional case of an object in free fall from earlier in this unit. Once again, both of the objects are under the influence of the Earth's gravity, so then therefore vertically the same two equations that we saw earlier for free fall, they apply here as well. So recall those equations. Okay, first of all, here's the position equation. Like so, where the acceleration is downwards at a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. And then notice right here the initial velocity vertically of the projectile. That's described right here in terms of the speed and the angle. And then we also have the vertical equation for the velocity v sub y as we saw for free fall. That's like so once again. And then these two equations here describe the kinematics of the projectile in the vertical direction. Okay, what about the horizontal direction? Well, keep in mind that in the horizontal direction that there is no acceleration. So then therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and write the position equation that we saw horizontally from earlier in this unit. But when I do, I'm not gonna write down an acceleration term. And the reason for that, once again, is that there is no acceleration horizontally for a projectile. So horizontally, the position then therefore looks like this. So this is initial position plus initial velocity times time. But notice that I'm specifically writing this as the initial velocity in the x direction. That's this guy right here. Notice that there is no plus one half at squared term. Once again, the reason for that is because there is no acceleration horizontally for a projectile. And then lastly, what about the velocity horizontally? Well, the velocity horizontally, v sub x, for example, and vx naught is a constant because once again, there's no acceleration for a projectile horizontally. So then therefore, the last kinematics equation for a projectile very simply is the following, showing that the velocity vector horizontally never changes. So what I've written here are the kinematics of a projectile in the vertical direction and in the horizontal direction. And now we'll go ahead and apply these equations for just a couple of basic, simple examples. Let's take a look at the first of two examples. In this first example, we're just gonna look at the easiest possible case, and this is launching a projectile horizontally. Go ahead and copy this example down into your notes. Let me begin to read it to you here. Okay, a bullet is fired horizontally at a height of 1.25 meters above the ground. 1.25 meters, by the way, is a roughly shoulder height. And we launch then with a speed of 400 meters per second, that is, by the way, a realistic number when talking about firing a bullet. It's above the speed of sound. And then we're going to calculate a couple of things. In part A of the problem, it says when and where does the bullet strike the ground. And then later on in part B in the problem, we're going to make a comparison when an object that is dropped from rest at the exact same time at the exact same height. As we work through this problem, we may begin to clear up some prior misconceptions about projectile motion that you may have had prior to today's lesson. Okay, let me do it. go ahead and do some racing here on the board and then draw out part A of the problem for us. Okay, so for part A, okay, let's say that right here is the bullet and we launch it like so. So the initial speed here is given to us as 400 meters per second. And it does say that the bullet is launched horizontally. What that means is that the projection angle theta naught is equal to zero. The projection angle is always measured with respect to the horizontal direction. Okay, and now let's say that right here on the ground, directly below the point where we launch the projectile, this right here is the origin. So then therefore, horizontally, what we're saying is that the initial position x naught of the projectile is equal to zero. But then right here is the initial position vertically the initial position vertically, y naught, that's given to us as 1.25 meters. Okay, and then the projectile ultimately traces out its path, also known as its trajectory, by the way, and it then falls to the ground. When it eventually reaches the ground, vertically, its final position y is equal to zero. And then what we're gonna calculate in part A of the problem are two things. We're gonna calculate the time necessary for the object to fall to the ground in this manner, and then we're also going to calculate right here the horizontal position x, the horizontal displacement. Okay, now let's start to work our way through the mathematics of the example. As I do, the first thing I'm going to calculate 
are the initial components here, VY0 and VX0, of the projectile that is when it's initially launched. In doing so, keep in mind that the angle theta0 is equal to zero. So let's take a look at the VY0 first. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead now and plug in. I'm gonna plug in 400 meters per second times the sine of zero degrees. In degree mode in my calculator, I punch in the following. I type that in 400 and then multiply by the sine of zero degrees. For those of you that already know a little bit of basic trigonometry, recall that the sine of zero degrees is in fact zero. So the initial velocity then therefore vertically is equal to zero. This makes sense just from the diagram alone because remember that we are launching the projectile horizontally. It has no vertical component to its initial velocity vector. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate the VX naught as well. This is the initial velocity horizontally. To do so, we'll just plug directly into the expression here. So VX naught is gonna be 400 meters per second times the cosine of zero degrees. Okay, the cosine of zero degrees, by the way, once again, for those of you that know a little bit of basic trig, is in fact equal to one. So then therefore, the initial velocity horizontally is equal to the initial speed of V naught, cosine of zero degrees is one. This is equal to 400 meters per second. Once again, this makes sense because we are in fact launching the projectile horizontally. So the horizontal component of the velocity is just the initial speed of 400 meters per second. Okay, now that I have those values, here's how I work my way through the remainder of the example here for part A. Okay, let's actually begin by taking a look at the vertical position equation. Because in the vertical position equation, two things here are equal to zero. The final vertical position, that's this point here where we reach the ground. And then as we just calculated a few moments ago, the initial velocity horizontally. So these two terms here and here, excuse me, vertically I meant to say. These two terms here and here are in fact equal to zero. So let's rewrite the expression then therefore in the following way. Like so. So notice I plugged in the final vertical position and the initial vertical velocity as being equal to zero and the equation simplifies to become this. You may recognize this equation. It's very similar to equations that we saw when doing the one dimensional free fall case for an object that is dropped from rest. In fact, it's the exact same expression. We'll see that again in part B of the problem in just a few minutes. Before we do, however, the only unknown that I have here in this expression is the time t, which I can now solve for. So let's do a little bit of basic algebra. I'm gonna move the 1 half gt squared here to the other side, like so. And then I'm gonna cross multiply by the two and the g over to the other side to get the t squared then by itself. That looks like this. And then the last step here mathematically to get the time t by itself is now just to take the square root of both sides. Let me erase the board here to give myself a little bit of room in order to do so. Okay, so the time t is now then therefore the following. And now we just go ahead and plug in our numbers. When we plug in our numbers for g, we plug in just 9.8 meters per second squared. So I have here now the square root of the total, two times then y naught, which was 1.25 meters, and then divide by 9.8, and this ultimately comes out to just be a half a second. So as long as you fire the bullet exactly horizontally, it falls to the ground in only a half a second. Okay, now that I have this time t, let's go ahead and find the horizontal position x by using this expression here. In this expression, this right here is equal to zero, and then this right here, keep in mind, was just 400 meters per second. So it's 400 meters per second times then a half a second. This then therefore is a horizontal displacement of 200 meters. So if you fire the bullet exactly horizontally, horizontally it will travel 200 meters and it will fall to the ground in a half a second. Okay, let's now make a comparison here in part B. I have to move my file to do so. Okay, so in part B it says, compare to a ball that is dropped from rest from the same height at the same time, which object would hit the ground first? Hopefully as I worked my way through part A of the problem, you began to recognize that the answer to part B is that they will in fact hit the ground at the same time. 
However, let's show that explicitly by doing part B as a problem like we would have done for the one-dimensional case of a free fall from earlier in this unit. Okay, now earlier in this unit, here's then how we would have set up part B. Okay, so here's the ground. Remember we always saw the ground as the origin when doing one-dimensional free fall? And then right here is our ball that's initially dropped from rest. So the initial velocity or, uh, vertically is equal to zero. Okay, right here is the initial vertical position of the y naught. That's equal to 1.25 meters. And then the object falls to the ground, so its final vertical position y is equal to zero. It has a final velocity vertically v sub y. We're not going to bother to calculate it, however, but we will find the time t that is necessary for this to occur. Okay, here's how we would have approached this problem mathematically earlier in this unit. Recall for free fall that we have the following vertical position equation. It's the same expression as the expression above for the two-dimensional case of projectile motion. And now let's just immediately plug in our zeros, just like we did up on the top board. The final vertical position y is equal to zero, and we're dropping the ball from rest so the initial velocity vertically is equal to zero. And then therefore the expression simplifies to become this. And notice that this expression here is exactly the same as this expression here as we noted earlier for part A of the problem. So if we went through the remainder of the example and solved for the time t, we would once again end up with a half a second. The two objects hit the ground at the same time. Think of this problem as like another version, if you will, of the monkey hunter demonstration. In this case, what I'm doing with the monkey hunter demonstration is I'm firing the gun horizontally at the target, the monkey, which is right here. And then both objects like so hit the ground at the same time. I would eventually hit the target, in this case, on the ground. Okay, let me go ahead and conclude this portion of the projectiles lecture with this problem.